everybody, welcome to Archives Live. I'm a couple minutes early, but we are trying a little bit of a new setup with some interesting buttons that I will probably randomly push and create, whoa, lots of color effects because I don't know why I'm so fancy with this. <laughs> anyway, um, we are going to be doing our usual thing, which is our local history. So in order for us to pick what we're gonna be looking at today, what I would like you to do is pick a number between one and 10 and go ahead and put it in the comment box below or to the side, wherever it's located on your device. So go ahead and do that now, pick a number between one and 10 and I'll see it. As always, if you do have any questions, I will be very glad to answer them. All you have to do is go ahead and type them. And as I see them, I'll go ahead and answer them if I know the answer or we'll see what we've got going on. Hi, Margaret. So go ahead and type in those numbers. Need a number between one and 10 to pick the cabinet that we're going in today. It has been a busy week. And for those who do not know, no, we, we are currently still not open. We're waiting for the, uh, the provincial guidelines, the step for us to open to the public. However, curbside is still available, as well as if you have archive requests, you can submit them by emailing me at ardis, A-R-D-I-S, at cochraneontario.com. Uh, of course, you can give us a call, 705-272-4178, and you can leave your request that way. And lastly, you can always visit our website for more information on archives, www.cockroompubliclibrary.com. You're going to click on the services tab, go to archives. On there, you can access the uh, birth, marriage, death index, as well as the filing index and get all the information that you're interested in for local history. <laughs> We've got a cool array of projects coming this summer. One of the projects that we're currently working on are local history clips that will be showcased on our YouTube channel. They will be on different areas of Cochrane, be it cemeteries, uh, historical landmarks, and we will go into the history of that location. They will all be videotaped on site. And again, it's just for entertainment and knowledge purposes. Okay, we got a number. So today we are going in miscellaneous. <laughs> So the miscellaneous cabinet, now I need a number between 1 and 50, please. So go ahead and put it in the comment box. I hate it when I get in this wheelie chair because I just want to go like this, back and forth in the wheelie chair. Don't know why. <laughs> okay, more people tuning in. That's great. So we have just picked the filing cabinet already. Um, for those of you who are just showing up, it is 2.30 now. I was a little bit early. And go ahead and put a number between 1 and 50 into the comment box, and we will see what file we are taking out of miscellaneous. What can miscellaneous include? It can include anything from crime to information that doesn't quite fit into any of the other categories that we have listed. Could be tax information, could be a random tidbit of information about the community. Who knows? Oh, hi, Lynn. I hope you're doing well. Okay, so Lynn is the first one to put a number. I'm going to go grab number 17. Bear with me. Number 17. I find this new setup a little bit different. We got this big shiny light and feel like I'm on the, the news. And I look so tanned with it, so it's good. Number 17 is taxi driver crime. It is a very small file. Let's see what it is. Taxi driver crime. 10 points to the person who correctly guesses what kind of crime it is in the comments. I'll give you a couple seconds. And while we're giving you a couple seconds for that, go ahead and throw some more numbers in there because this file will be super quick. Okay, this is actually a crime from 2016. <laughs> Okay, 
and it has pictures. Oh my goodness. I will read to you the crime. Are you ready? Overpricing. Well, that's a crime in itself. I come from a prestigious line of taxi driver, owner of taxi stand, and yes. Ironically enough, pricing is gauged by the town of Cochrane. <laughs> Um, so this is a Cochrane man is facing charges after his vehicle rolled into Lake Commando. Police say the incident happened near 5th Street and 9th Avenue earlier this week. I'm just going to tell you point blank that it happened pretty much directly in front of Hebner's. Anyway, OPP say no one was injured and no one in the vehicle at the time, but there was no one in the vehicle at the time that it fell into the lake. However, police did discover that it was being illegally used to move and sell alcohol. A 54-year-old man has been charged with unlawfully delivering alcohol and unsafely operating and parking a vehicle. A court date has not been set. And a little bit of backstory on this. The person in question, they had parked their vehicle, a taxi, in front of Hebner's, jumped out, didn't put it in park, and it rolled into the lake. Now, obviously, right now, that couldn't happen in that situation just because now they have that beautiful bench and the fountain and all these other things there. But at that time, in 2016, none of that was there. Therefore, it just rolled on in. I mean, maybe the swans wanted a ride. And let's see here. Oh, these lights make it easier for you to see this. Good. So there is the wonderful taxi. And we, ironically enough, have a video of it, too, of it getting pulled out. But I'm not going to show that. And that's it. That was literally the crime in 2016 in this file. Okay, give me another number. Yeah, so uh, Jody just asked in the comments below when we will be having archives open. And I know a lot of people are interested in coming into the archives. However, we have to wait until the library is open to the public and then we have to follow the guidelines. So it might be a while yet. You might be stuck with me on here for a little while longer before you can dive deep into the archives. But remember, if you are interested in just random tidbits, we have these videos on YouTube so you could go back and view them. As well as if you check the Cochrane Times post, they post weekly, uh, 50 years back in history. So you can check that out. And my Cochrane now, Moose FM, they're very good at putting their little history bits on Mondays as well, so. Oh, thank you very much. Definitely different setup today. I like, I have all these toys to play with now. Could get real dangerous. And if I'm like squinting, it's because I should put these on my eyes and then I could see. Uh, interestingly, interestingly, we lived next door to the Hebners until 1976. Not the first time vehicles did this. I agree with you, Lynn. I'm sure it's happened many times where someone didn't put their vehicle in park and it rolled on into the lake. Um, that lake has seen more vehicles than it has ever needed to see. I still remember, uh, remember when the town was, um, what were they doing? It was something to do for Carnival. And they had the the red, the, remember the old red trucks? They still have a couple of them, but they've kind of upgraded. But it went through the lake over by where the docks are, and it actually, like, broke the dock. That's, that's a little random fact. Okay, we got another number. I'm going to go grab that file. This is another crime file, and it was number 28. Super small. Hi, Mr. Gerard. Okay, but it is only one single thing that I'll read to you, so let's see what it is. Uh, the day when I could read without glasses, I miss it. Okay. 
This is from the Porcupine Advance from August 23rd, 1937, page two. Boy of nine drowned at Cochrane Lake last week. Vincent uh, Bullman, a lad of nine years of age, was drowned in a lake in Lake Commando at Cochrane on Thursday evening last. He and two other boys were in a canoe while about 50 feet from shore. Vincent fell out of the canoe. He was unable to swim and is said to have gone down immediately. Strenuous efforts were made to save the little boy's life, but without avail. Dr. M. B. Arfasano, the Carter brothers, and other volunteer divers made uh, repeated efforts to locate the body. It was more than a half an hour after the drowning before the body was recovered. The recovery was made by use of grappling irons. After the body was taken from the water, a number of volunteers worked for considerable time in the hope of resuscitation, but all of their efforts proved useless. We're really hating Commando Lake today, aren't we? That's a really sad story from 1937 from the Porcupine Advance. Kind of sad here. <laughs> I want some happy news. Okay, so go ahead, throw me another number, and I will pick another file. That's two files so far. We're picking small ones today out of miscellaneous. And if you are uh, interested, a little bit later today, I'm going to actually do a quick video showcasing uh, some of the residential school material that we have available at the library that you can take out with your library card. And through that, then you're gonna be able to place holds. You can call us or you could do it online uh, for that said material that I'm gonna showcase. A lot of it has, uh, it's good for a lot of different ages. We have picture books that are good for juvenile as well as we have a lot of adult literature, uh, be it nonfiction and fiction, um, based on true events, as well as we do have French, graphic novel, and we even have audiobooks. Again, they're all on the topic of resi uh, residential schools. They're either experiences or based on their experiences. And uh, if you're having those difficult conversations right now in light of the, the news uh, of the 215 that were found, um, they could be a very useful tool for you in, with discussing it with children and discussing it with other people. So uh, again, we're going to have that a little bit later today. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so what we decided, uh, Christina, myself, uh, and uh, Rachel's here today, and uh, we cannot lower our flag to half-mast because of the type of flagpole it is. Um, it cannot be lowered to half mast. So we felt that we needed to do something to show that um, we are thinking of the families of those who were affected by the 215 that were found. Um, and what we did is we cut, and you can see the picture on our Facebook page, we cut out the, the orange t-shirts and placed them on our front windows along with the number 215. So if you're driving by, you're, you're more than welcome to have a look at that. And uh, there's a few different places in Cochrane. I know Alien Rate Public School, or sorry, Alien Rate Catholic School is, uh, they have one in front of the tree in front of their school where they're placing the shoes uh, in a new friendship center as well. So if you're interested in contributing to any of those, feel free to go and do so. Uh, whatever helps you in the process of understanding this news. Hi, Debbie. Two Debbies now, so. Debbie number one, Debbie number two. Okay, I have another number. I'm going to go grab that really quickly. Throw your comments in there. Thanks, Jamie. Jamie told me, nice shirt. What can I say? It's a little summary. Okay, file number 32, a little bit smaller. They're all small files today. This one is Hockey Girls. Let's hope this one is a little bit more uplifting today. It's a gloomy, gloomy Thursday with the, I almost said Saturday, <laughs> gloomy Thursday with the weather out there. I got kind of caught in that at lunchtime. Okay. 
Cochrane girls hockey teams for the Brampton Tournament, 1995. So let's see. See if I can show you some of these. Ladies hockey team. And I'm going to show you some photos. We're going to see if they turn out now that we have this fancy little light thing behind me. Um, ladies hockey team. While Cochrane hockey has often been thought of as a game exclusively for men, over the years women have been involved in the sport as well. This, fo this photo is proof that in early times the involvement... Uh, of a hockey team was ladies in 1930. That is a very strangely structured sentence. The ladies were playing in the tournament in Inglehart when this picture was taken. Members of the team include, from the left row, there's uh, Tyranda, Russell Bellevue, Ruth Smith, Dorothy King, Audrey Ardell, Dorothy Anderson, Margaret Hannon, Nellie Lebron, uh, Edna David, Peggy LeBaron. Missing from the photo is Azora Anderson. Um, yeah. So this is 1930s. See how it's going to look here. Does it look? Yeah, that light helps a lot. Have a look at that. It's a good looking women's hockey team. Good stuff. Okay. Got a couple copies of that. And that was in the 1999 um, Northland Post. And again, and it was in 1997 Northland Post. We have two copies of it. Here's another one. Um, and it's from 1997. Okay. This is... Saturday, April 22nd, 1995, Cochrane Times, a winning combo. The Johnson's Jewel Cats are a talented hockey team. Back row, left, right, R. Assistant coach, Linda Moray, Judy Gerard, Helen Cousineau, uh, Agel Vio, Lynn Johnson, Julianne Cheron, Lindsay Knuckle, Knuckle uh, Renee Demers, and coach Shirley Westman. Front row, Trisha Froud, Lindsay Westman, Susan Curry, Lynn Robitaille, uh, Jed Trues, Ashley Worrell, and Jasmine Levike. Copper Girls hockey team looks good at Brampton Tourney. And it is quite the long article. But I'll let you have a look at this picture. There's the hockey team. Not that long ago. Okay. Let's see if we can skim through this. Although three Cocker, although three Cocker girls teams did not come home with medals or trophies from the Brampton tournament, Bev Curry, president of the Cochrane Ho girls hockey, described the experience as a major success. The girls played hard, explained Curry. Uh, they enjoyed the whole weekend. There was a lot of good cheering in the sections. A lot of parents were there. It was a lot of fun. We're all planning on working even harder next year for the girls tournament uh, to be in Cochrane. Our peewees are outstanding. The, the Adams met with a lot of hard competition. Uh, the Brampton tournament was has grown tremendously with over 300 teams playing in 10 ice rinks in Brampton and surrounding areas. It's come a long way in three years that we played there, said Carol Ann Goulet, the past president. It's, pretty, it's a pretty tough tournament. Only one team advances into the finals from each division. We were playing teams from down south that are five or six years ahead of us, some even 10 years. It was a great experience. It was quite competitive, and so were the Cochrane teams. Most of the games were close. Among the teams that Gulad noticed uh, from the area were the Timmins Panthers, a Bantam team looking at their first year in Brampton, and the St. Laurent College in Montreal. And then it continues. So that's really interesting. And then we've got a copy of it again in black and white. You don't hear very much. I don't know. Is there, is there a girls hockey team? Is there a girls hockey league anymore? I don't know if there is. So if anybody knows that information, gladly share that with me. Um, isn't it co-ed? Like, isn't there, I feel like I've seen girls on the guys teams now. I don't think it's specifically girls and, like separated, segregated anymore. I, I could be wrong. Um, I'm not 
all versed with all hockey things. So anybody knows any of that information, go ahead and drop me a line. You can email me or just post it here. That's fine. Um, we are coming to the end of our session today. Thank you very much for tuning in. We do appreciate all of you taking the time to watch these videos. If you like this video and you're interested in more Cochrane history, we do have many more of them, a whole year and a half of them that you could go ahead and you can view on our YouTube channel. So go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. The link is on our Facebook page, as well as on our website. Uh, and you'll get all sorts of different content, not just archives, but even our new, uh, we were talking about that project with the little history locations we're gonna do and have uh, landmarks spoken about. It, that'll be cool. You'll be able to see that first on YouTube before anywhere else. Uh, as always, if you have archive requests, Thank you for being extremely patient if you've submitted them already. I am a little bit behind again. I am trying to rectify that, so hopefully you'll have responses sooner than later. But if you want to submit one in the meantime, you can do so by emailing the library, library at CochraneOntario.com. You can email me directly, Ardis, A-R-D-I-S, at CochraneOntario.com. You can give us a call, 705-272-4178. Lastly, you can visit our website for further information and all these contact details, www.cochranepubliclibrary.com. Hope you guys have a wonderful day, a great weekend, and remember curbside is open Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. for all the books that you're interested in. Bye.